hello, I'm Chris and uh, I'm a shedder. Sounds a bit like Alcoholics Anonymous, doesn't it? Um, but while I have more than a, a normal interest in sheds, I can, I'm not addicted to them. Uh, I do believe that I could knock a shed on the head if I needed to. I could shed sheds if I really had to, I think. Aging. Um, this year, I, I, well, I used to think until this year that uh, aging was irrelevant, that it was getting older was things that happened to other people. And then a number of things happened uh, over the last 12 months. First of all, uh, I reached 60. And I don't know if you know, some of you may, that on the day after your 60th birthday, your body has a habit of letting out involuntary noises when you bend down, to sit down, to lie down, and when you get up again. And I'm not talking about farting. I'm talking about the sort of the, oof, or the, oof. And it's just something that's uh, pretty, pretty natural. But on to more serious bodily mal malfunctions. Over the last 12 months, I've also recovered from uh, prostate surgery. And I've also got over a uh, period of anxiety and depression, which was just the latest in 20 years of living with mental ill health. And I think I've arrived at what a guy called Tim Lott, he's a writer and he was also 60 this year, he describes as early old age. And that's really why, I, why I'm here. After uh, numerous visits to the hospital, after a number of cocktails of drugs, and celebrating my birthday eight months after the event, um, I found a, a better medicine, a better way uh, to stay healthy and happy. Sheds, and I want to let you in on a secret. Sheds are... I want you to sort of close your eyes now, please, if you feel comfortable. And I want you to imagine in your mind's eye a shed. Now, it may not have been a garden shed, but it probably is now. And I wonder how you describe that shed. Maybe a dumping ground for, uh, for things that you should have thrown away years ago but you're hanging on to just in case they're useful. And it might be a place where if you're a man, you like messing around. And also, uh, it might be a place for quiet reflection, a retreat where you go for reflection and relaxation. You can open your eyes now. And I reckon that most of you have probably got fairly positive images of garden sheds. And in fact, of course, sheds are good for comedy. Um, some of you may remember the Monty Python sketch where Arthur Two Sheds Jackson, who is a classical composer, is being interviewed. And the interviewer is more interested in his nickname than he actually is in the musical masterpiece he's just created. And for me, the funny bit is the fact that Arthur doesn't actually have two sheds, but uh, he's got this nickname. And in fact, he was only thinking about uh, getting another shed. And do you remember Jesse from The Fast Show? He was a country bumpkin, and every week he used to come out of his shed and declare his strange diets, his fashion tastes, uh, and his scientific experiments. So yes, sheds are a stage for comedy, but they also have a more somber side. Aside, uh, and, and recently I learned that the word shed is from the old English skiadu. Uh, which means shadow, shade, darkness. And indeed, sheds do have a much darker side, a place where, sadly, people choose to kill themselves. People across all ages. Suicide. A subject which, like cancer, we find it difficult to talk about. Not just men, everybody finds it difficult to talk about. And... In sheds, it is a matter of being, um, how can I say, uh, suicide. Uh, I've, been, I've been learning about suicide, and I was surprised to learn from the Office of National Statistics 
that suicide in men kills more men than does car accidents, um, liver disease, heart disease, and cancer. And I was shocked and saddened to discover that 12 men in the UK kill themselves every day. Think about that. That's one life every two hours. Absolutely shocking. And when we come to the difference between men and women, we find that men are three times as likely to kill themselves as women. Uh, in 2003, the Office of National Statistics showed that men made up 78% of suicides uh, in that year. Why the difference between men and women? Well, one of the reasons is that men find it difficult to uh, seek help from people who are closest to them. And at a certain age and stage in men's lives, they, there are particular risks. At life-changing moments, such as bereavement or divorce, uh, or possibly family moving away, men can find it difficult to cope. And this is also bad if, as a result of our unemployment or retirement, they lose their status and their identity, even greater if they're losing a uniform, even if it's only a uh, business suit. And compared with women, men have fewer support networks. Uh, generally speaking, they have less interest in learning things later in life and doing things differently. And of course, we know that when it comes to the important stuff, uh, men are not only particularly good at talking, but they're not very good at listening either. So they retire to their garden sheds to do uh, projects, retirement projects that they think are going to last for months. Uh, and in a matter of hours, or in a matter of months at least, a matter of weeks, the projects are done. And captains of industry, even captains of industry, or maybe particularly captains of industry, are asking themselves, well, is that it? In, in the garden shed, there uh, men may be coming to escape from their partners in the houses. And the partners have, over many years, organized the home, They've organized their day, uh, weekday lives to suit themselves very, very nicely. And, and the man has to escape. It's called the underfoot syndrome. And so he goes to the bottom of the garden. And whether that escape is a, uh, a retreat or an escape, um, there, it's, it, it's easy to uh, absorb a sense of isolation um, and insignificance. I was um, in a pub with a friend not that long ago, and we were talking about our families growing up. And uh, he said, sometimes I think that if I actually just walked out, my family wouldn't even notice. And there, another time I was talking with another friend, and he was saying, we were talking about female relationships. And he was saying that uh, when his wife brings her friends round, uh, he's banished uh, to the garden shed on his allotment. And yes, banished was a word he used. So the uh, joy of solitude turns into the pain of isolation. You know that classic phrase from Cold Comfort Farm, something nasty in the woodshed. This is it made real. And being busy takes over from productive and uh, useful and creative activity. And I think growing old should have such positive connotations. But as men, we seem, as we grow older, we seem to be conditioned into letting go of things but not replacing them. And of course, the impact of being uh, isolated is, has, a, has a, a, a very, very strong mental uh, impl implication for our mental health. A study in 2010 concluded that loneliness is the same health impact as smoking 15 cigarettes a day. And it's also twice as bad as obesity. I want you to close your eyes again. And this time, I want you to imagine a different kind of shed. It's a place where men come together to do those retirement projects together. They share ideas. They swap 
skills, uh, and they have fun while they're doing it. The sound of laughter uh, comes only second to the buzz of power tools and the banging of hammers. And they talk shoulder to shoulder, not face to face, about life and relationships and about their health. Things that we don't talk about in pubs and clubs and at sports events. Would you like to open your eyes now? The, our population is aging. We are, um, we're living longer uh, and loneliness is increasing. And also the health services stretch to breaking point. So it's not surprising people feel that uh, people feel that the end of their life, they may have concerns. But I have some great news. The shed that I just described to you already exists. It's called a men's shed. And men's sheds, in fact, are not very new. They came from Australia about nearly 20 years ago. Their origins are slightly older in the early 80s, when there were places where damaged Vietnam veterans would gather. Uh, and they would care for each other. They'd talk to each other. They'd listen to each other. And out of that very sort of troubled beginning, they've now, it, a global movement of sheds, of men's sheds, has now grown up. So there are now near, uh, over 900 in Australia. And in the UK, there are 400 sheds already open or planned. And even in May, we just added 20 new sheds. Now... This week is Men's Health Week, and on Sunday, uh, it's Father's Day. So please, we at the UK Men's Sheds Association, we're celebrating three years, our birth, third birthday. And I would ask you to do three things in the next three days. One, find out your nearest men's shed by going to the mensshed.org website. Pass the information on to three men that you think would benefit from a shed would stay healthier and happier for longer. And thirdly, if there isn't a shed in your area, please sow seeds and grow one. Thank you.